my stepdad tried to take my PS5 away for his kids. So I sold it and now they're devastated. My 15, M mom and dad met and briefly dated, while they were both studying at uni. My mom gave birth to me after they had broken up, and had to sue my dad for child support. I was raised by my mom, and had virtually nothing to do with my dad throughout my childhood. My mom was an international student, and her family cut ties with her due to the circumstances of my birth. Tragically, two years ago, I lost my mom to cancer, and thus I was placed under the care of my dad. My dad has remarried, and has two sons five and seven with his wife. It wasn't a bad arrangement at first, but we were all essentially strangers. I was given a bedroom to myself, and we shared some meals, but other than kept to myself. About ten months ago, I was lucky enough to score a casual job at an aged care facility as its support. It was stupid easy money as it involves installing and maintaining a dozen or so common PCs used by the residents plus running basic computing workshops. I ended up accruing a whole lot of disposable income in a short time. Stupidly, instead of just keeping quiet about it, I decked out my room with a new TV, headphones, and a PS5. Obviously, this setup was of great interest to my two stepbrothers. Initially, my rule was that they could play the PS5 anytime I wasn't using it. But I would get first dibs if I wanted to play or use my TV. I was also super accommodating by buying an extra controller, which I didn't need in several kid-friendly games that they wanted to play. I eventually had to change the rule to only play when I was there, because the five-year-old destroyed one of my controllers through spilling juice on it. This is where the drama started. They whined to my parents, who then ordered me to place the PS5 in the living room. I refused, stating that I had purchased it with my own money. This led to their argument that I have too much money and should contribute rent, utilities, and food money. I called their bluff and said, sure, draw up a contract, and I'll get a lawyer to review it to ensure it complies with the Family Law Act. My dad then told the boys that he was going to buy a separate PS5 for the boys for Christmas, but the dude is clueless about the global shortage. Finally last night, after realizing that he had zero change of buying one for close to RRP, my dad threatened me to voluntarily gift my PS5 to the boys for Christmas, or he would toss it in the bin while I was at school. I was so pissed that I went on Facebook Marketplace and sold the PS5. The boys found out today and were devastated. I feel really bad because they shouldn't be punished for this SHT show. My parents are in their room talking about me, and I'm sitting here in my room. Ada, how could I have handled this better? Update comment. Update. Wow. This blew up overnight. Firstly, thanks to all the kind strangers out there who have given me your positive encouragement and support. It's quite humbling that so many took time to read my story and chose to provide positive support. Some people were after an update on the situation. I'm at work now, but my stepmom had a chat with me this morning, and it was quite positive. She said she didn't know about my existence until right before I came to live with them, and so it caused a huge rift between her and dad. She apologized for projecting that onto me and not being more welcoming. She also didn't know about my dad's threats and told me that it wouldn't happen on her watch. My half-brothers also admitted to her about the juice incident. She said that she is going to get the boys a switch for Christmas, and she offered to pay me the difference between RRP and getting a new PS5. My probs won't take the money, but at least it's a step forward. This was the longest conversation I have ever had with her too, BTW. No communications from my dad yet, lol. To answer some common questions. My bank account is entirely in my name only Australia. No one else has the ability to view or access the balance. I actually don't think my dad's demand for rent was about money. They both earn a good salary. He's just but hurt that I'm not reliant on his money. Yes, I really am 15, lol. I typed out my post in Word, so that it could be spell and grammar checked. Maybe that's what confused people. I get $27.50 an hour on a casual contract, with additional loading for weekends. The operations manager at the aged care facility is super chill and allows me to schedule my hours around school. I just have a cap that I can't go over. She lets me do my homework on the clock, and I get free meals from the cafeteria. If I help residents on non-facility devices, they usually tip me in cash, or sometimes cookies, lol. I've got a fair bit saved up because I don't really have any expenses. I've got a shoebox of documents from when my mom passed. I think my mom's assets are looked after by a trustee firm, which will be turned over to me at 18. The law firm managing the will had previously explained this to me. But I wasn't really paying attention at the time. I've got to still go through everything. I sold PS5 for a tidy profit, even with the cost of the damaged controller. 
I'm not desperate for one ATM, so I'll just sign up for a waiting list again, so I won't need to take up my stepmom's offer. This is probably my last post on this issue. Thanks again for the love, everyone. Update 2. The 19th of December. So we've got a gathering with the extended family today. This is the first time I've met any of them due to COVID, and they've all been super lovely to me. My stepmom showed them my original post, and they are all getting stuck with dad. My uncle dad's younger brother has set up a Reddit account for him, and he's doubling down as he thinks Redditors will take his side when they read his account of it. I'm not going to link or read his post, but people have been telling me it's quite a bloodbath. But wait, it gets better. The father then did his own ADA post. ADA for asking my son to share his console with his brothers, instead of keeping it in his room. A few days ago, my bio son Jonah, real name posted a biased and frankly defamatory post about an incident in my home regarding a PS5. My wife was kind enough to share the post and comments with our entire extended family at our Christmas gathering. So apparently now I'm a huge arsehole. My brother suggested that I post here to set the record straight and give people both sides of the issue. Firstly, I never actually intended to charge Jonah rent. His job gives him essentially 100% disposable income, purely because he lives in our household. He used this money to deck out his room, buy brand shoes, buy the latest iPhone, etc. All for himself. I couldn't care less about how he spends his money. But it does set a poor example for my other two boys. The last straw was when Jonah set a login password for the PS5. I basically told him that if he's not willing to share, then why should I give him a free ride? My son should be grateful. While we share DNA, I only dated his mom, may not actual name, for all of five months back in university. I was very clear with May that I didn't want kids, but apparently consent doesn't go both ways. May put me through legal hell and ended up costing me tens of thousands of dollars over the years in child support, setting my own goals back. Instead of letting Jonah end up in a group home, I stepped up and took him in when May got sick. Instead of gratitude, I constantly have to deal with disrespect and attitude. Because of Jonah, my wife thinks I breached her trust all for something that happened well before I met her. While the boys previously did have access to PS5, he now won't let them play it now that school is finished for the year, unless he's home which he never is. I gave him the ultimate of either sharing the console or no one getting to play it. In response, he pulls the most passive-aggressive move ever and sells it. So now no one plays it. So listen, how am I the arsehole here? I've taken in this kid into my home, a kid who, by the way, will receive a sizable inheritance in a few years thanks to May's estate. I've given him a home, a family, and funds for his lifestyle, all at the cost of my own relationship. In return, I haven't asked for a cent, and he won't treat me with respect nor follow my rules. But somehow, I'm the giant arsehole who's in the study typing this out instead of enjoying Christmas with my extended family. Instead of attacking me, I'm hoping people will now give their fair opinion of the situation based on seeing both sides of the story. The father gets as flamed as you imagine and has this reply in the comments. Okay, clearly this hasn't gone in the direction I thought it would. Clearly some of you have issues with comprehension or just can't be bothered reading my comments fully. I want to be clear. I never threatened to collect rent from Jonah. I don't his part-time work money or his inheritance money. I make a very good salary, probably more than the vast majority of people who use Reddit. I simply tried to explain to him that he has all this disposable income because he doesn't have to worry about basic needs. I didn't explain it properly at the time because we were arguing. But my intention wasn't for Jonah to give his PS5 to the kids permanently. I just wanted it kept in the common area until I can buy another one for Jonah never told me about the controller. If he had, of course I would have replaced it. That's not an issue. I expected him to not be so selfish toward his brothers. Keeping it in his room under password protection is so rude. Jonah gets home really late most days, so my kids are in bed by the time he gets back. I won't debate the nuances about his ex in custody. I'm not an idiot. I understand perfect consent and parental responsibilities. I will just say that there is a large gap between consenting to SX and consenting to having a child. I get that our current laws are against me on this one. I didn't intend to lie to my wife. Jonah and May were something way into the distant past for me. Our settlement agreement was very clear on that. I had absolutely zero communication with May or Jonah for at least the 10 years prior to finding out about her illness. My child support was at a fixed rate, so I had actually paid her out a lump sum that was supposed to take care of him until 18. It wasn't like it was getting taken out of pay every week. As far as I knew, I was never supposed to hear from Jonah or May ever again. Why would I tell my wife about something like that? 
Yes, Jonah is a new addition to our family. Yes, I get all of this isn't his fault. I don't love him yet, and to be fair, he hasn't made it easy. I will try to. This SHT takes time. You all act like it's easy. Update. Sorry, I know I said my previous update post was the final one. I think I just have to do one more to close everything off. There's a lot of emotions running through me right now, so I'm sorry for rambling a bit. Firstly, I'm immensely grateful to all the Redditors who reached out to me to voice your support or to make sure that I'm okay. I'm very touched. Secondly, I got to meet and spend time with my extended family today. There were over 40 of them here. They are a rowdy bunch, but they are amazing. They really made me feel welcome. Some of my cousins are gamers too, so there was an instant connection. In terms of family, it's been mostly mom and me for my whole life, so this is definitely new to me. But my new family were 100% accommodating and were very interested in me. Thirdly, my stepmom turned out to be a champ. One of the first things she did was introduce me and show everyone my Reddit post. It turned into a massive debate where nearly the whole family laid into dad, including my grandparents. At one stage, my uncle another Redditor pulled me aside and told me, don't worry, mate. Your dad has always been a bit of a stubborn CNT. He'll get over it. Another amazing thing was when my nan said she knew my mom quite well, and we had a great chat about her. I think we broke dad in the process. My dad got very loud arguing with the family, and my uncle somehow trolled my dad into posting on Reddit to, tell his side. He's been on his laptop in his study since then for nearly the whole night, glued to the screen. He didn't even come out for dinner. I don't know how this will end, but all I know is that I feel so much better. Whatever happens with dad, at least I have some amazing family members, swapped some gamer tags with my cousins, and have reached some common ground with my stepmom. To think, all this started with a single Reddit post. I lack the words to describe how grateful I am. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your love. I hope everyone out there can be as lucky as me, and spend the holidays with their loved ones. Sending you peace, love, and good vibes, wherever you are. John. Updates, mostly from the dad. Ada for intercepting, and eating my son's food delivery, while he was grounded. My eldest son 16 is undergoing a hormonally fueled rebellious phase. His behavior consists of things like rolling his eyes when I talk, backchatting when I tell him to do something, overemphasizing putting on his headphones when I enter the room, and a whole laundry list of other passive-aggressive behaviors. It was his birthday yesterday, and he was going to go out with his friends, this weekend to celebrate by paintballing. However, when I got home from work yesterday, I noticed that he had failed to do some chores I had set him, and then did the whole headphones routine when I started telling him off for it. I got so sick of his attitude that I threatened to ground him for two weeks, which means not letting him leave the house except for work. My words clearly cut through his headphones, and it dawned on him that he would not be allowed to go paintballing this weekend. So he took off his headphones and said, go F yourself, and then shut himself in his room. This naturally led to his actual grounding. The grounding didn't seem to phase him, as he spends a lot of time in his room anyway. I cut off his devices from our home Wi-Fi, but he works around this by having his own hotspot. He refused to come out for dinner last night, when my wife asked him to, and has basically barricaded himself in his room. At 10 p.m. last night, he ordered himself a meal via a delivery app. Again, he has clearly been passive-aggressive here, flaunting his independence as he has a perfected lovely meal in the fridge made by my wife. I was still up watching TV, so I intercepted the delivery and ate the meal myself. At some point, my son must have come out and seen me, but retreated back to his room without saying anything. My wife thinks I am a major off for eating the meal, but I think it comes part and parcel with the grounding. My wife also thinks I'm too harsh with her due to the grounding. I'll let him go to paintball if he apologizes. So am I the awe here on Reddit? The son posted this comment in reply. Hi everyone. Sorry for hijacking the top comment. This is my dad's post. Thanks for everyone's support. I don't think I need to add any more fuel to the fire here. The post and the comments largely speak for themselves. I just wanted to give a quick update to everyone that I'm 100% fine and okay. My stepmom's vetoed my punishment, so I'm all good to go out with my friends this weekend. One of my new uncles has asked me to stay with them for a while, which is also super cool. So I'm doing well and loving life. These comments are hilarious. Much love. Update. Ada for buying my wife a new dress. My M, 34 wife F, 29 and I regularly attend formal functions tilde once every two to three weeks. I work as a consultant, and these events are a great way to attract new business and network. 
My wife generally dislikes these things, but she puts on a good front for me. It's generally a good night involving lots of food, alcohol, and socializing, while our kids are looked after by a sitter. Due to the pandemic, we haven't had any for about two years, but they are now starting to come back. On a function two weeks ago, my wife came downstairs dressed in a pantsuit and her hair in a simple ponytail. Don't get me wrong, she still looked amazing, but pretty much all the other ladies were ball gowns or cocktail attire. When we talked about it afterwards, she told me that she was sick of the hours of hair, makeup, nails, and preparation, and that if I insisted she go, she would dress however she pleased. I tried to explain that these things are necessarily part of my industry, but she wouldn't budge. She counters that she never drags me to any of her work functions, to which I responded that we should compare payslips, which was clearly the wrong thing to say, and she left the room. After the argument, I tried to make it up to her, so I ordered a very nice and expensive gown for her to wear for the next function. I even took it to our tailors for adjustment, as they know her measurements. When I presented the dress to her, she was initially very happy and said the dress was gorgeous. But as soon as I mentioned that she should wear it for our next function, she immediately blew up at me. She thinks I am being manipulative and going against her wishes. I thought I was just offering her a nice gesture. Ada. Update. Posted as a comment by dad in the post. I'm sure many of you would be ecstatic to know that my marriage may be over. I came home this evening to find that my wife and my two younger boys have left. Probably at her mother's house my oldest is still staying at my brother's house, since the beginning of January. This has hit me hard. As Redditors now like remind me on a daily basis, I now know I have been a shtty husband and father. I have some self-reflection to do. I am stubborn, but my wife has always been there to talk me down. I guess she has had enough. The only communication I have is a text from my wife saying, she wants a divorce, and that her lawyers will get in touch regarding separation arrangements. I have tried calling, but it keeps going to voicemail, same as my in-laws. I want to apologize. I want to offer to go to counseling or therapy, like she asked. If I still can't get through to her via phone, I am thinking of going to my in-law's house. I have to try to at least talk to her. I guess my readers hate me, but I welcome any suggestions on, if there is anything I can try. Since Ada wasn't in his camp, Dad continued to post. But in other subs. Update. My wife wants to divorce me, and won't talk to me. How can I win her back? Hi all. I need some advice about how to win back my wife. And I am genuinely willing to do anything. My wife F, 29 and I am, 34 of 8 years have been having serious relationship issues over the last few years. The main area of friction between us, is that I have a son M, 16 from a previous teenage fling that I never told her about, we also have another two young children together. My 16-year-old had to come live with us about three years ago, because his biological mother died. His presence in our lives caused a lot of tension between my wife and me, because she felt I had majorly breached her trust. We argued more and more about minor things until last Thursday, I came home to an empty house. I am devastated. My wife is the love of my life, and has always been the main support center in my life. I tried calling her, but she kept sending me to mail. She sent me a text saying that she wasn't ready to talk, but was filing for a divorce, and to wait to hear from her lawyers regarding separation mediation. I am a wreck. I would do anything to have her back, including counseling and therapy she had previously asked me to attend, but I was too arrogant to take it up. I felt that if I could just talk to her, I could have a chance to explain, and we could get through this. The next day I did something stupid. I went to her workplace and accounting firm with her favorite takeaway lunch to try to talk to her. She must have worded up the reception staff, because they adamantly refused to buzz me into the office. Her staff even went as far as calling for building security. Not wishing to cause further drama, I left voluntarily. That night, I doubled down on my stupidity and tried to visit her at her parents' house with a bunch of gifts for her and the kids. My mail answered through the intercom, but wouldn't let me in. I was so frustrated and emotional that I broke down at their door. Basically making a scene and refusing to leave. Later, my brother turned up I assume my wife called. He tried to convince me to go home, but we ended up in a shouting match. He eventually tried to manhandle me back to my car, so I got into a physical altercation with him. But I left when my father-in-law came out and threatened to call the police on me. Things have really gone downhill since then. This morning, two police constables turned up to where I work with a provisional domestic violence order along with a summons to attend court for a permanent order. I was in shock, and, as a result, was inadvertently quite rude to the constables. This put them offside. I am a contractor working at a client's site. 
And so when my client asked the constables what the matter was about, they said they couldn't say for privacy reasons, but then immediately handed out business cards with their family violence liaison unit title embossed at the top. So now my firm's senior partner has waved me off going back to the client's site. And I may be fired. I feel like this is the wake-up call I needed. I know I have been a narcissist a whole and am ready to change. What can I do to talk to her? To show her I am determined to be better. I don't want to just end it like this. I know that if I have a chance to explain myself, to apologize, to promise to work really hard on my marriage, to work on my narcissism, to go to therapy, to go to counseling, whatever my wife needs to forgive me, we can get on with our lives. Our court hearing is in a few weeks, so I am thinking of turning up early with some expensive jewelry and trying to talk to my wife before the hearing. My solicitor has told me this is a bad idea. But I feel like I need to do something. I don't want to negotiate with my wife across a courtroom. I just want to remind her how much I love her and how much she means to me. What can I do to win my wife back? Has anyone else been in this situation? My wife has left me and won't talk to me. I caused a scene at her work, and now there is potential legal action against me. I want to win her back. Update. I get it. It's over. You guys are right. I've f asterisk 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 get up. Irrevocably this time. I've lost my family and likely will lose my job. I've always tried to control everything in my life. It's worked for me in the past because my family is wealthy, and they've fixed things for me. But my wife and brother must have spoken to my parents because they said, I can't use the law firm my family has on retainer for my DVO or upcoming separation proceedings anymore. I'll hire my own solicitor as soon as stuff starts opening. I'll seek mental help too. Most importantly, I'll leave my wife alone. Thanks for your comments and advice. The son then comes back with an update from his stepmom in a comment on his dad's last post. Hi everyone. A lot has happened over the last few months. My stepmom has been reading all of these posts and comments. She saw that he's now saying that he will change and hoping to gain some sympathy for it. She emailed me this today to pass on so people can decide if he deserves any. I haven't edited it anyway. I just copied and pasted it. Hi everyone. I am not a Reddit user, but I have been following the messages that my stepson and my soon-to-be ex have written. I would also like to thank the hundreds of kind people who immediately saw through his bullshit and gave him some hard truths. I am also grateful for all the well wishes to me, my sons, and Jonah. Apart from the few incidents last week, which isn't the complete picture, BTW, he has stopped trying to contact me directly. But I am hearing from mutual friends that he is on a mission to garner sympathy, trying to lay blame for his life falling apart everywhere except for himself. I note that he is throwing a pity party for himself on Reddit too, hoping to get people to congratulate him on how much he has changed. Ha! I want to set the record that this man deserves no sympathy. I have been with him for eight years. Yes, I realize that I am a naive idiot, and I take my part of the blame for not only sticking around, but for having two now three. Incredible, light of my life, adorable children with this man. I will lay out the autopsy of my marriage and let people judge for themselves. I met him when I was 21, a broke university student trying to make it on my own. I met him while working at my part-time job. I was taken in by his looks, his wealth, and his confidence. We got married within three months. I was stupid and vain, tricking myself into thinking, he was the prince to whisk me off to a better life. After our wedding, the manipulation started. He wanted to convince me not to continue my studies. You don't need to, babe. I'll look after you. You just look pretty and look after my house. After the birth of our first child, I took 12 weeks off for maternity leave. I was pretty established in my job then. He again tried to convince me to be a stay-at-home mom. He tried to gaslight me, saying that, it's not fair on your son, and that his fondest memories as a child were with his mom at home. Throughout the marriage, he would constantly use his wealth as leverage. My dad, bless him, is a good trotty but terrible businessman. Early on, my ex arranged a loan through his family trust to rescue my dad's business. My ex would then gently remind me of that fact every time we disagreed about something. He would constantly monitor my credit card usage. He would question me on certain transactions that weren't to his liking. For example, fashion, gym, hair, buttocks. Makeup is equal to completely fine. But a latte and a muffin. Who the hell did you have a coffee with? He would constantly provide input on my appearance. As an example, he would show me pictures of celebrities and tell me that it would be nice if I dressed and did my makeup more like that celebrity. He would also make offhand comments about what I ate. Are you sure you want to order that in a main size? 
didn't you have a sugary drink already at lunch? Or my personal pet hate? I think my wife will have the salad tonight. At the industry awards or charity things we went to, he would tell me who I should talk to. I can't tell you how many inane, vapid conversations I've had with other spouses about the latest bags or some other tea collection. I once made a joke about him in front of some of his colleagues, and he scolded me like a child on the car ride home. You all know about him hiding Jonah's existence from me. What you may not know is that he lied about Jonah's mom and made her out to a gold digger who tricked him into having a kid. This is why my initial reception of Jonah was definitely not warm, and I am ashamed for it. He's a really decent and sweet boy and is so kind and patient with my two boys. He deserves better than his dad. I can go on for pages and pages. This list doesn't even begin to describe the level of narcissism, manipulation, and control he had over me for the last eight years. I know I am equally to blame for this, but I'm done with it now. I wasn't strong enough. I wasn't confident enough. I didn't want to say no to a man who gave me everything. Even now, at weak moments, I feel myself start to miss him and wonder if I should just endure it. Maybe he'll change just enough that I may be able to live with it. But then his recent fake pity party bullsh tea snapped me right out of it. I don't want his money. I don't want him. I just want my kids and I to live our lives free of him. Thank you for reading. The son made a comment in regards to his living situation and his dad trying to call him. I'm living with my uncle and cousins at the moment. My dad has texted and called me a few times, but only as a way to talk to my stepmom. Update. Hiring an investigator while under intervention order act via Wayback Machine. I'm just considering some options here. From a legal standpoint, is it illegal for person A to hire a private investigator to survey person B while person B has an intervention order against person A? Update. I'm grieving the life I used to have. I had it all. I had everything. A beautiful wife, gorgeous kids, an awesome house in the suburb, a well-paying job, and a bright future. It all came crumbling down last week. My wife left with the kids while I was at work. It took me by surprise. Sure, we argued about little things like any other couple, but I had no idea she would hit the exit button so suddenly. I am a good provider. I have nice shiny things, and we were I thought a great couple. Sometimes these things just aren't enjoyable. Now I'm sitting alone, in a house filled with nothing but memories and silence. The most painful part is that I feel like I can get my life back on track with a gentle nudge. Unfortunately, my wife won't give me a chance to talk one-on-one. -on -one. Next time I see her, she will likely be on the other side of a conference room with lawyers. Maybe I've changed. Maybe we've both changed. All I know is that I still love her, and it hurts every day. I just want my life back. Update. Ada for insisting my girlfriend be allowed to pick up my children. I 35. M have recently separated divorced. Not finalized with my wife 31. F we have two primary school aged boys together, of whom I have custody of one weekend, a fortnight Friday to Monday morning. I work fairly long hours, and every week my team goes out for dinner drinks on Friday night. It's important team bonding, and I feel these sessions are a critical part of my job. My girlfriend, Jane 25. F. is a primary school teacher from a different school to my boys. I recently filled out a form with my boys' school to designate Jane as a guardian for purposes of picking up and dropping off my boys at school. I commute the other way to work on Mondays, where Jane works at a school near our boys' school. With the current custody arrangements, it's only one pickup and one drop off a fortnight if Jane was to do it. Unbeknownst to me, the school sent the form to my ex wife for her signature. My ex is now super mad at me. From my perspective, Jane is a perfectly acceptable person to look after our boys, as she is my girlfriend, a qualified educator, and the boys get along well with her. She only has to pick them up and drop them off, and maybe look after them for less than two hours without my presence. My ex says I'm an arsehole and says that I am trying to shirk my responsibilities. I don't think that is fair. My ex is going through her lawyers to specifically write to me saying they prohibit this. I think she is overreacting because she is jealous. Am I the arsehole here? Verdict removed before verdict rendered update my STBX wife is not happy with my holiday plans. My M31 wife F27 and I have been separated for about 6 months, but not divorced we were together for 10 years. We have two primary school age boys. She has more custody than I do at the moment because of my work schedule. But my aim is to work towards joint custody. We came to an agreement to split the school holidays between us. I the first week, and her the second. 
I had such a blast with the boys during my week playing games and watching movies with them at my new apartment. Just before my wife's week commenced, I asked if we could all do a few things together. Go watch a movie, have a meal together, etc. It would be nice for the boys to see their parents get along after all. To my shock, my wife said that she had already booked a holiday for the boys, and I would have no access to them for the entire week. Fortunately, my eldest boy told me that my wife had organized a cruise for them. To make things worse, it was the cruise that my wife and I talked about talking about when we were together. I was admittedly very hurt that my wife would take my dream family holiday without me. Apart from my personal feelings, I was mainly concerned about the safety of taking two boys by herself. A lot can happen on a cruise ship. I didn't know if she was going to be alone or with a boyfriend or a group. So my main goal is to ensure the safety of my boys. I took time off work and also booked a cabin on that same ship luckily. There were plenty of vacancies. I don't want to be intrusive on my wife's time with the boys, but I thought it was a sweet gesture that at least I can look after the boys while she gets a massage or wants some time alone. I even got a VIP cabin suite so the boys can have room to sleep over. When I surprised her on the ship, she went a pesh t ballistic at me. In fact, she screeched so loudly that security had to intervene, and we were all interviewed separately by the head of security. The head of security seemed to immediately take my wife's side white knight and told me to stay away from my family. But I mean, it's a ship. I've just been hanging in my room for the last few days, but I'm not sure the direction from security is enforceable. Obviously, my wife has once again misinterpreted my nice gesture. I didn't go on the cruise to interrupt her trip, merely to make life easier for her to enjoy herself while spending time with the boys. Hit that subscribe button now, or you'll be the one asking, wait, what did I miss, while everyone else is cracking up.